Hello and welcome to section 3, SAP HANA Architecture. In this section, we're going to take a look at the architecture of SAP HANA in a landscape perspective and a database perspective. We're going to look at how persistence works in HANA and we will also see what kind of hardware is available out there in the market today for HANA and who are the hardware partners for HANA. So this is the SAP HANA landscape architecture. When we say landscape, I'm talking about HANA and associated technologies and activities to propose as a solution. So we have HANA in the center. This is the SAP HANA platform visualization. And just right below that, we have all the ETL tools. So ETL tools stand for extraction, transformation and loading tools. In, in short, they basically help us, <coughs> excuse me, to get data from different data sources into HANA in real time and non real time basis. Down below we have the data sources, the different forms of data sources and uh, there could possibly be more data sources. We talk about how it connects to the ETL layer and eventually how the data is brought into HANA. On top we are looking at how the artifacts created on HANA and stored on HANA can be consumed. Let's start with the different data sources. So today in an organization, you will be getting data from multiple sources. So you might have transaction databases, you might have analytical databases, you may have vendor applications to whom you're talking via an API. You could be talking to Twitter or any other platform using an API. So all of these form the different data sources. We have a couple of them right here. So for example, we have the SAP ERP system, which is your main application layer on top of the transaction databases. And for the SAP ERP, we can bring data into HANA depending on the use case, whether you want to be able to visualize the data in real time or not. So depending on that, you can use a suitable tool. So you can use an SLT, SAP Landscape Transformation, to bring the data in real time or you could use something called the DXE to bring the data inside of HANA but not in real time. Now DXE offers special functionalities like it allows you to consume the extractors from the SAP ERP system into the HANA system. So you want to be able to reuse that logic which you have built over a period of time. Any customer might have done that or even if you want to use the SAP logic right out of the box, then you can definitely use DXE to bring the extracted data or information from your SAP ERP system into HANA. Obviously, you can use SAP ERP with BODS as well. I am missing a line here. You can also use ERP with BODS to bring the data into HANA. This is also not in real time. Now, BODS is an ETL tool, so it offers much more functionality than just a replication tool like SLT. You can transform your data, you can clean your data. For example, if you have you know, addresses into a master data, customer database, you could clean that data and then bring it into HANA. So that is the best practice to bring data into HANA is you, you have to clean and transform whatever is required prior to loading into HANA. We don't want to have stale data sitting into HANA and then you do all the cleaning and transformation inside of HANA. BW, you could also use SLT, you can also use BODS. For most of the conventional databases, like for example, if you have a DB2 or an Oracle, naturally you can use BODS. BODS is a very versatile tool. It talks to a lot of data sources. You can also use Sybase replication server to talk to conventional databases. Now, Sybase and SLT, both are replication tools. We will talk about them in detail in the data provisioning topic. But just to let you know right about here, Sybase performs the replication in a different fashion and it has a better ability to talk to databases outside of SAP. It's not like SLT does not do it. SLT also, you can also use SLT to talk to, for example, Oracle and DB2. Sybase has a little bit longer list in, in being, being able to do that. Now, if you want to talk to Hadoop, unstructured data, you can talk to Hadoop via BODS and push the data into HANA. So you can consume XML, 
via BODS and you can consume various other format data in a format using BODS as well. BODS also helps you to talk to APIs like Twitter API or any other API. You can also use smart data access. You don't see that here, but you can also use smart data access to bring data into HANA virtually. So smart data access will talk to your conventional databases, your Hadoop database, and it will bring the data into HANA in a virtual format. So what it means is you keep the data where it is and you only bring the metadata as a virtual table into the HANA database. So you, you'll be able to see it, you'll be able to work on it, you'll be able to create models on top of it, but it will not have the data inside of HANA. So this is a new way of keeping data where it is and building a data lake for dividing and working on different temperature data like hot data, cold data and warm data. Not to forget your Excel flat files, a lot of organizations and business users and uh, techno functional users still are working on the Excel sheets. So therefore, you can naturally bring that kind of data into HANA directly. You don't need any of these uh, tools to, you can bring the Excel files or CSV files directly into HANA. Now let's look at the consumption layer. So we have the SAP BobJ reporting tools. So for example, you have your Web Intelligence, Explorer, you have a lot of tools in the BobJ suite. Now we have the access engine inside of HANA. So you can build and deploy applications inside of HANA. Outside of HANA, you can use any consumption device like a mobile device or a desktop device. You can also build these applications and host it any other application server, for example, WebSphere or WebLogic. And you can still talk to HANA via ODBC, JDBC and treat HANA as just a database. That is also possible. HANA is also certified to talk to some non-SAP reporting tools like MS Excel and Tableau and IBM Cognos. This is a small list. Uh, SAP keeps certifying um, every now and then. So you, you, you will have more tools. You will have to check the certification documents. 